Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. Today is day two of this uh, personal capital project where um, I uh, fix my broken personal finance ecosystem. In the, in the earlier session, um, I told you what the problem was in that, uh, you know, Mint no longer exists. So, you know, a lot of us personal finance gurus have been using Mint um, for for finance tracking, and it was it did a great job. It was it was a really great tool, um, but um, Intuit uh, transferred everyone from Mint to Credit Karma, and Credit Karma uh, is nothing close to what Mint was. And um, for a lot of us Mint users, we have to we're lost figuring out what what, what is our new personal finance tool going to be. Um, it, it shouldn't be Credit Karma. Uh, first, you can't even use Credit Karma personal finance on a on a web browser. You only can see the personal finance side on your phone. And uh, you know the big component for what I use personal finance or meant for was for transaction spending. Uh, you know, by transaction, um, analyzing every transaction and bucketing them into spend categories, and seeing the big picture, having this huge transaction table that I can look at in Power BI. Um, <laughs> You you can't you know you I don't I don't even think you can export CSVs uh, to from Credit Carbo Mobile Mobile so um, you know it's off the table for me so um, I'm using personal capital now instead of Mint and uh, it's doing a pretty good job um, I went through the real hard work of defining every single transaction from uh, current date all the way to uh, beginning of February of 2024. So four months of, of transaction spending and um, put everything into categories. And, uh, you know, I'm, now I feel very satisfied. I got personal capital uh, as my primary tool. It's, it's totally uh, configured the way I want it. And uh, it's a web browser that I can use on my phone, on, the, on a computer uh, every day just to look at my, my finances. That's mostly what I'm going to show you today. Um, I'll show you what I did and uh, what I'm working on. Um, I still got a lot of work to do uh, on the BigQuery side to take the personal capital table and the mint table and combine them together. They have to be of the same schema, of the same essence. Everything's got to be the same, all the same fields for them to stack correctly. And uh, I'm working on that right now. So let me share my screen and I'll show you what uh, what I've done in personal capital. All right, so here's uh, my personal capital e ecosystem. Um, it is uh, fully accurate at this point. Uh, my net worth is 163,730. Not too bad. I got uh, $600,000 in assets and 438 in liabilities. Um, you know what this is great for is uh, I'll show you cash flow. This is a really great uh, piece of information that personal capital gives. Mint didn't give this. Um, I don't know of another website that does this. I am able to do this in Power BI, but uh, this is this is month over month cash flow. Um, so uh, cash flow is the difference between your income and your expenses, your take home income, and then all your spending. Um, and the difference of that is your cash flow. So I've definitely been in the negative this month. Um, I've uh, you know ever since I've kind of lost track of my spending, uh, it's really gotten out of hand. Uh, these past three months when I haven't been tracking my spending, um, I've been very reckless spending a lot of money and uh, now I gotta fix it. And, uh, you know, ever since, uh, you know, uh, May 15th, I've, I've been a good job of controlling my spending, um, you know, using, you know, working in personal capital for as extensively as I have for the past week. You know, I've put about 40 hours into this uh, website um i've seen a lot of things that i was spending money on that i shouldn't have such as uh, i was paying for a cleaning lady 500 bucks a month i scratched that that was just too much i want to keep that money and do the cleaning myself um, i was subscribing to farmer's dog for to feed my dogs and that was turning into a lot of money every month and i decided to scratch that um, i scratched my gym membership uh, to crossfit because i haven't been using it much I have a home gym that I enjoy much more. 
Um, and then little little itty bitty subscriptions I decided to cancel, such as like LinkedIn. Um, I don't know what LinkedIn Premium does for me. Um, I don't know why I buy it. Uh, there's no sense in buying it, I don't think. Um, so yeah, you know, cash flow. Here's income, you know, the income side of it showing a month over month income. You know, last month I did get a nice big bonus. I don't get that this month. So uh, at the end, it's going to be around 800, $850 is what I take home. And then expenses, uh, here's month over month expenses. As of now, I've already spent $9,480. Holy crap. So I'm already going to be in the negative this month, cash flow wise. I've already spent may more than I've make. Um, but, um, you know, live and learn and I'm fixing it now and I'm controlling my expenses. Uh, yeah, all these categories are accurate. These are the personal capital categories that I created. Um, a big problem with personal capital is it only create allows you to create like 50 or so uh, spending categories. There's a limit, and uh, that really bothered me, but uh, there's no sense around it. So um, I'm going to have to do some uh, text, uh, text mining uh, in Power BI to actually get to the most granular category of which I had in Mint. I wasn't able to get that in personal capital because there was a limit to the buckets. So I created the buckets as best I could. Here they are. Um, there's probably more. This is just for the month of uh, this month, but this is kind of all I've spent. Um, and then the budgeting tool is really nice in personal capital. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to start using this as a budget. It, it's nice. You know, there's no better way to use budget than on an online tool because, um, you know, all my, my personal finance ecosystem, I only update it once a month and I want to see my budgeting on a daily basis so you want to do it in the tool um so next month i'll definitely put in the the right um limit and uh try to be under the or try to create a zero balance budget and be right on track but uh you know this is a nice tool so like you know you click on groceries and you see all the Places of which you spend uh, groceries. These are all the description categories. So I go to Carly C's mostly. Sometimes I go to other grocery stores. Here's all the transactions for groceries. So um, you know this is a, this is a nice tool. Personal capital is nice. Um, I haven't. I never used it for for transaction uh, analysis. I was always using it for investment side, which it does a really good job with too. So investing. Um, you know, here's uh, my portfolio balance over time. Um, here's all my uh, my financial accounts for for investments. Um, holding. So uh, this allows you to see, you know, your uh, your your uh, your yield. You know, how much are you making off your money? You can compare it to other things like. I'm a little bit under the S&P 500, U.S. stock, foreign stock, but I'm way over U.S. bonds. So, you know, my portfolio is mostly stocks, but some bonds. Um, I, I don't touch it. It's, I think it's fine what I'm doing. I'm just, uh, you know, using what Jack Bogle wanted, what he recommends. You know, the it's all about the allocation between stocks and bonds and then for stocks, just invest in the total stock market. For bonds, just invest in the total bond market. Make sure you're also investing in, in outside of U.S. A little bit of world, but you know you, you really only need a four 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 stock portfolio. Uh, the Vanguard total stock in the U.S. stock market, the world stock market, the U.S. bond market, and the U.S. Um, and the world bond market. Those are the four stocks you need. Index funds, ETFs. So uh, here's allocation. So yeah, I'm very heavy with U.S. stocks. Got some international stocks, U.S. bonds, international bonds, and a little bit of alternatives. Uh, and here are my sector mix, so mostly technology. But yeah, that's all my investments. So you know, personal capital, mostly known for the investment side. It does a great job with that. But uh, now I'm using it for budgeting and cash flow and all that. So um, the real work that I did. 
was going through every single transaction that you see here and categorizing it into its bucket. Um, you know, uh, mostly keeping track of spend, you know, um, but this is every single transaction, whether it be from investment account, whether it be from a credit card or a checking account, or whether it be my mortgage, it, it has everything. Um, to the left, you see all of my financial accounts. I have tons. I have, um, here's all my cash. I got 14,000 in cash, 133 in investments. I got a uh, negative 21 in credit card debt. And I got, uh, I got a car loan. I got a mortgage and I got here are my assets, my two cars and my, my home. Um, so I had to go through the process of, uh, you know, from, from May all the way to February, categorizing, categorizing every single transaction. And, um, you know, personal capital lets you split transactions. That's huge. Like when you go to the grocery store, you're probably spending money on groceries, some dog food, some home supplies. You want to split that transaction into its necessary categories. And, uh, I was hesitant. I didn't know whether personal capital allowed that, but it does. And that's nice. The real only downfall is just the fact that there's a category max that serves no purpose. Uh, I wish it didn't have that, but uh, that was the only downfall. So yeah, now I have personal capital up and running. I'm very happy about that. It's totally up to date. Um, I got every transaction categories as, that I need. Um, and uh, yeah, I got it up and running. So this is cool. This is gonna be my, my go-to personal finance uh, website tool. But it's just a piece to my overall suite of personal finance, which I have in Power BI. So I'm going to take this data. It's really simple. You just put in the time frame of what you want, and then you say export to CSV, and there you go. It exports it in a simple CSV file. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like as a CSV file. Simple, simple table. Date, account, description, category, tags, and amount. That's six fields. It's all it's got. All I really needed to do um, was bring it into bring it into GCP using um, cloud storage. So um, this is cloud storage. Um, I have a single bucket, and I just imported the personal capital transactions table. And then there is that mint table right here. I don't need to touch that ever again. That goes to way, all the way to January 31st of 2024. That's just now a stale data set that I'm always going to use, but this is going to be the new one. And uh, now I'm in BigQuery and the, the, objective of, the objective of stacking the personal capital table and the, big, and the mint table, that's what I'm working on right now. So um, this is the, the large BigQuery. Um, script that I have written. Um, and I'm just starting right here. Um, this is the last mint transaction like manipulation table. And right, I think this is a good place to do the personal capital. I started with adding transactions that for some reason were not in the personal capital table. Um, I have an Apple card that doesn't sync. So I had to add all those. Um, and uh, my Home Depot card, I wasn't synced. And uh, for some reason, some big transactions were just missing, like this Air Airbnb trip I took. So here's just hard-coded transactions that are just missing from personal capital. They're always going to be missing. That's step one of the data manipulation, just adding those transactions. And now I'm currently working on the step two part of it, which is first um, categories, categorizing every account into its right thumb, right category, the same as Mint. So this is what it comes out as personal capital. And then this is what it want is gonna. This is the same uh, attribute value of which it is in the mint table. So when they combine and aggregate, they're gonna come out in the same bucket. So here's all the accounts. Here's all the the company names, and then here's the account type. And now I'm working on category. So uh, first step in category is marking everything as what type of category it is in regards of spend whether it's a loan, whether it's a transfer, whether it's investments, income. Um, I'm do, making every single category that exists in, in the mint table. So uh, this is the first mint table that basically I'm just sharing the same logic, doing the same exact thing, 
defining every single column the exact same way. Um, so at the end of the day, they, right before I combine these tables, they're, they're going to look the exact same. So they're going to stack seamlessly. And then uh, that will allow me to have um, my transaction table um, be up to date. It, it's going to combine both the mint and the personal capital. Um, so um, today, I'm just going to keep grinding away at this big query. This is probably uh, the second hardest part of the job. Um, you know, what I did in personal capital was was a lot of work. Um, just categorizing categorizing every single transaction, keeping looking at every single one, and uh, you know. It's all a matter of getting all these tables up to date. So this is the data model of inside Power BI. These are all the single, all the tables being used. There's about 20 you see here. I just got to get them all up to date, and that's what I'm working on. Um, um, I have this Excel table, like uh, this, this by monthly um, table that uh, has what I've been using for 12 years, and uh, I got to get this up to date. So First thing is first is getting the big query right, and then that will help me fill out um, this table of this is my finances. This is really the bread and butter. This is what I use um, for financing. Um, I also have a budget table. Um, even though I haven't been tracking my spending, I have every at the beginning of every month figuring out everything I have in all my accounts, making sure that's something you just have to do the first day of the month. If you don't, you lose it. So at least I get that and I can backtrack and fill out all the spending and all that, but I need to have all this account value information. Um, so I still have a lot of work to do in this, in this transfer of this project from mint to personal capital. Um, but I'm chipping away at it. I'm, I'm almost, you know, I'm, I'm in the grind. I'm halfway through it. And, uh, you know, for the rest of the day, I'm just going to be doing big query coding, trying to get um, the personal capital table up to date. So thank you for uh, being a part of this and uh, stay tuned. And I'll show you uh, the work after I, you know, get a, get a couple uh, days worth of work in. Have a good one. Bye.